Welcome back, folks, to the 2018 Library Chess Productions Movie Awards. We have gotten into our People Awards now, and we are going to kick things off with our top three best actors of 2018. Obviously, actors, male, we'll have our own video for actresses, female, and best directors, male or female, will get their own video, and that will sort of cap off the People Awards section of the awards. So each of us obviously have three choices, like we mentioned, for best actor, three for best actress, and three for best director, but we each have three honorable mentions as well. So what we'll do is we will start with our three honorable mentions, then name off our number three, the next person will do their number three and their honorable mentions, two, two, one, one, you know the deal, let's get started. Okay, so before I start, I gotta say that when I was first making this list, I thought that my top three were, like, fairly respectable um, in relation to, like, public opinion and whatnot. Okay. But, like, my honorable mentions had just, like, gone off the rails. <laughs> uh, but then I kept going, and I kept thinking of people and whatnot, and I realized that the whole thing is basically off the rails. Perfect. So you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. I break some rules, I have weird-ass picks, so just stick with me. So, But my, honor my three honorable mentions... And I apologize if I screw up any names, like the pronunciation of the Yeah. Because yeah. I suck at pronouncing stuff. Okay. So my number three honorable mention is, it's two people in one. Okay. I'll explain. David Diggs and Raphael Cazal from Blind Spotting. When you get two people and their chemistry are so good, sometimes I kind of just group them together. Okay. Like, uh, like in The Spectacular Now, or like Straight Outta Compton, like... You know, like, the right. performances were so great that not one is especially amazing, mm -hmm. but together, they're such a joy to watch. Um, that's what I mean when I'm breaking the rule picking two for my number three. Okay. Uh, just such good chemistry. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, because, really because of quantity, I mean, he was good in all these movies, but didn't have, like, a standout performance for mm -hmm. me, but, like, the Sisters Brothers, don't worry, you won't get far on foot, and you were never really here. He was really good in, like, all three of those. Yeah. So just on quantity... Um, I'm giving him my number two honorable mention. And my number one is Ethan Hawke in First Reformed. Um, oh, yes. He's just kind of quietly putting in really great performances. Mm. I considered him in my top three, but he's just outside of my top three because he was really good. He played the character perfectly. He had a lot of pain, but it was like very subtle. It wasn't over the top. Like right. Ethan Hawke just is a great actor that doesn't always get the recognition from the mainstream that I think he deserves. Or maybe he does. Maybe I'm full of it. I don't know. But yeah, him and him and First Reform, he was really good. So those are my honorable mentions. Oh, cool. I like I, I always look at Ethan Hawke as like he's the talented Mark Wahlberg. And it's not saying that Mark Wahlberg is thoroughly untalented, because he's not. I enjoy but Mark Wahlberg. I enjoy Mark Wahlberg too. Roles. But it's like I look at Ethan Hawke and I'm like, I think you could play every role Mark Wahlberg's ever played and play it better. <laughs> so it's like that's that's what I mean when Even I like say a that. tough guy? Yeah. Really? Oh, see, I, we disagree. All right, we disagree enough. on that one. But Maybe Ethan Hawke's a better actor, I will right. say that. Fair enough. You were never really here was one that didn't quite hit me the way I wanted it to. But the performance wise, absolutely. No question about it. And uh, yeah, I, it totally makes sense, like I say, how you um, how you would lump the two characters together. It's like individually they wouldn't sniff the list, yeah, but like, because of the chemistry together, that's what I mean. The V Diggs is the best of the two, but I just right. loved like I forgot I was watching a movie sometimes because mm. I loved their interactions. And part of that's a script for sure. Totally. But they brought but they brought it to life, so I'm grouping them together. Cool. Because they're best buddies in the movie, so I'm making them best buddies in my list. There you go. So my three honorable mentions for best actor for 2018 are Bradley Cooper for his role in A Star Is Born, and also to a lesser extent, uh, his role in the Mule. He he plays you know he plays a relatively central character in the Mule, but his his role is a little bit more understated in that movie certainly than it was in A Star Is Born. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, Bad Times at the El Royale, one of the shocking, probably the most shocking performance of the year for me for how much I really really dug it. It's just like man, he's so good as a cult leader. Uh, and then of course Thor and in Avengers: Infinity War. And uh, John Krasinski in A Quiet Place. Krasinski uh, makes, because he only really had that one role for me this year, and I was like, it was really good, don't get me wrong, but uh, I, I, he, he wound up, very late in the year, wound up dropping just onto the honorable mentions. Yeah, he just dropped out of mine when I was making this list, but he was like, at, I mean, at the beginning of the year when there weren't many movies, he was a front runner, and he stayed in the list, like, throughout the whole year. Yeah, very, till very, very late in the year yeah. for me. I think it might have even been, like, just last month is when he kind of fell out of my top three. 
Yeah, Bradley Cooper, I mean, I like his performance. I'm not in love with that performance. Hmm. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. It's whatever. Uh, what was the one after that? Chris Hemsworth. Oh, yeah. Chris <laughs> Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, he was, that was good. That was a... Um, I'm going to mention this again with one of my picks, but sometimes I just I just love a performance that's just so entertaining. Yes. Like, that doesn't get enough credit when, like, in Oscars and stuff, because it's always, like, the serious roles that... Right. Like, they show a lot of uh, variety in what they can do and mm-hmm. hit, like, complex emotions. But I give just as much credence to the fact that, like, somebody can embrace a character so much. It's just entertaining. It's why, like... I considered Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Yeah, so did which I. Which I did, I think, the year Deadpool came out. I'm pretty because sure he embodied did. that character mm-hmm. so much. And it's just entertaining to watch. So, like, I give a lot of importance to that, too. Mm-hmm. I don't need every performance to be crying and yeah. emoting, em- like, crazily and stuff. So it's true. That's not, what, like, I like that. Pick. Not every performance has to be, like, Mahershala Ali. No. You know, it's just, like, it doesn't have, like, and, I, and no disrespect, obviously, I love his performances pretty much every time I see him yeah. on screen, but not every role and every performance has to be that. Yeah, so that was a good pick. So my number three pick, and if I pronounce his last name wrong, I'm sorry, Jacob Cedergren, or Cedergren, in The Guilty. Okay. Um, this is one of those movies that not really a whole lot happens, uh, so it's really important for the actor to nail it. Mm-hmm. Like, like remember like a movie like Phone Booth, or the one with Tom Hardy where he's in a car. I can't remember the name. Like, oh. not really a whole lot's mm-hmm. happening, so it's up to him. And I know not maybe not many people have seen The Guilty. I, I don't know, but it's a fantastic foreign film, and he Jacob is th- so enthralling in it that he really sells everything that happens but again doesn't like go over the top right so i wanted i wanted to show a lot of love for a performance that may not be getting you know a whole lot of recognition my number three best actor of 2018 is ed oxenbold and that's for his role in wildlife now he plays the son of jake gyllenhaal and carrie mulligan and what i loved about this performance so much is it's not like it's not a big performance by any means like this movie's set in 1960 which means it's set basically in the 50s <laughs> because the 60s don't really start january 1st 1960 right like you're you're certainly building towards that this is like middle america basically still in the 50s he's a 14 year old boy all of a sudden his father loses his job he's having a crisis of individual of, of identity basically he's like if i don't have this job what am i as a man so he runs away to fight wildfires for reasons makes sense <laughs> yeah. carrie mulligan like completely basically loses her mind ed oxenbould is thrust into the role of being the only functioning adult in his life at 14 years old He's just like, I guess I gotta go get a job because it's 1960 and 14 year olds can do that. <laughs> so he's like, he's going to school, he has to go get a job, basically keep his mother afloat who's trying to just have sex with random men now because she's because she's 34 and doesn't feel like this should be her life. And 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 his his performance is most of his performance is done through facial expression. Like, the, he doesn't have a ton of dialogue in the movie. There's there's dialogue moments, but it doesn't really have a ton. So really, it's just like, it's his reaction. It's the way he's portraying a 14-year-old boy who's trying to basically hold his entire family dynamic together. So the fact that, like, he, he just, he, and he portrays that so perfectly of being thrust into a role that's way too big for him like, as a character... And, and just the way he deals with that and the way that he executes that performance was incredible. So Ed Oxenbold is my number three. I, know, I never got around to watching Wildlife. It was very, very late in the year for me. It was within the last week yeah. that I finally got to see that. And I was like, I was like, okay, cool, it's Jake Gyllenhaal, boom, I'm there. Yeah. Because that's just, I just love Jake Gyllenhaal. And uh, yeah, no, it was, it was his performance really that, um, that, that set the tone, I think, for that movie. My number two is Nicolas Cage in Mandy and Mom and Dad. Wow. So I said earlier how just entertaining performances can do it for me. And Nicolas Cage was on this year. Now, Mom and Dad's technically a cheater, but it was really the first surprise of the year for me because, you know, I do classify it as a this year movie. And Mandy is just a fantastic movie in general. And in both movies, he's nuts because that's what Nicolas Cage often does. Right. But it's sometimes... Sometimes he's not that great because he's kind of phoning it in. And the movie's not very good, so it can't really handle him anyway. Mm-hmm. But in Mom and Dad, where he plays, you know, 
a dad that gets triggered to kill his own kid. Cause that's the whole premise of it. And then okay. the Mandy, where it's like a revenge tale, and he's just he's going nuts. <laughs> I just I love seeing Nicolas Cage when he's on. There's like almost nothing I'd rather watch. Mm. Um, and this will obviously not be a popular pick because right. Nicolas Cage isn't going to get award buzz. I can already hear the <laughs> comments being typed. <laughs> but it was just so much fun. Like I love that this is a year where I've seen two Nicolas Cage movies that a weren't garbage and b he didn't feel like he was just phoning it in. Mm. Like at this point, at least, crazy Nicolas Cage is best. Nicholas Cage. That's true. And he did it twice this year. So he's got the quantity thing going for him and the fact that there are very few performances that I just enjoyed more on like mm. a visceral level. So there you go. Nicholas Cage is my number two. Who would have thought? 2018. In 2018. Nicholas Cage. This is Cage. what I'm talking about. Going off the rails. I'm picking I'm picking two people in one spot. I'm picking Nicholas Cage. I'm picking one that maybe nobody has really heard of that much. Right. My number two best actor of 2018 is Timothy Chalamet, and I'm giving him the nod here for his performance as Nick Chef in Beautiful Boy. And like, I, I'm such a huge Steve Carell fan, and like, I've been long convinced of Steve Carell's mastery, basically, of his chosen art. But then you have Timothy Chalamet, who, the role as his son, his basically meth and everything else addicted son, he just goes for it. And, yeah. and I mean, obviously, if you're going to play that kind of character, you got to go for it. Like, you can't, you can't half-ass meth addict, yeah. which is a weird thing to say, but you can't, as performance-wise, you can't half-ass it. And he just goes, he is so pained, and everything that he has to go through internally is all over his face. And the, the where Harry, how he goes from anger to depression to kind of leveled out to trying to be happy to right back down into yeah. it it was the performance is such a roller coaster ride and to think that someone and i mean obviously it's more than just nick chef that's had to live this but like that people can live that and that is their reality to a certain degree and maybe in some cases even worse than that the way that he portrayed that kind of character was just i was so gripped yeah, he, uh, that was such an organic performance. Mm. Another thing that he had was just, like, how charming he could be and, like, how good yeah. he was with his, like, siblings and mm -hmm. stuff. Like, watching him play with his, like, what, half-siblings, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, like, his, well, whatever, siblings, still siblings. Yeah, totally. But, like, just watching them interact was a real joy, too, and mm -hmm. amongst all the other emotional beats that he hit. He's been picking those roles to get recognition, at least as a serious actor, because, like, last year was Call Me By Your Name, which I actually don't think... I didn't think he was, like, that amazing in. Like, he didn't make my list, but he was certainly really good in it. Mm -hmm. But everyone, like, critics and stuff loved his performance in that. I think he might have got awards, I can't remember. But this this is a year that I'm on board with how good his performance is. If he wins a bunch of stuff, I will not at all be sad about that, because mm -hmm. he hit a lot of notes, and he hit them really well. So my number one is Sylvester Stallone as Rocky, because Rocky, there's no, there's no objectivity when it comes to me. It's Rocky. The second he showed up on screen, I started crying. Right. <laughs> that's Just bawling. Not, he's not even like a, like he's a main character technically, because you know he's Rocky, but he's right. not even in that movie, in, in, oh, in Creed 2, by the way. Right. He's not even in Creed 2 a lot. Really. No, it's true. He's very, he's more supporting in this one than even Creed 1. Mm -hmm. But I don't care, because Rocky is the best character of all time, the best performance of all time, the best performance of 2018, the best performance of, if he's ever in another movie, he's gonna win that one too, because Stallone, not an amazing actor as a whole, but as Rocky, he is the most amazing thing I have ever seen besides my rabbit. There you go. Wow. And that's high praise. There's rabbit here, and then yeah, Sylvester Rocky. Stallone is Rocky. Wow. But yeah, no, but I do, like, he is, you know, I could have given, like, you know, if it was like a normal Rocky movie, he would have been in it more, and he would probably would have been more deserving of the award. Hmm. Like, I completely admit to bias, like complete bias. Right. Here. But he is really good in it. He's not. It's not even like he's not even as good in this one as he was in Creed, though. Like in Creed, he hit like he got recognition. Yes. For that, like best supporting character and stuff. It's still Rocky. Yeah, and it's funny. I should have seen that coming, and I didn't, and I don't know why, but I absolutely should have seen that coming. <laughs> yeah. Your best actors are Sylvester Stallone, Nicolas Cage. 
I, I, I stand I stand by these. Don't get me wrong. No, that's a, I'll argue these. His female but. picks are Helena Bottom Carter. <laughs> my number one pick for best actor of 2018, clearly on my list, the kids rule the day. It is Sonny Saljic in mid 90s. Oh, if that, that name, name yes. Okay. If that name is at all familiar to you, he was the kid in Killing of a Sacred Deer. He was the young son. Yeah. yeah. And so he's he plays the main character basically in mid '90s, where he's just getting introduced to like that Californian mid '90s culture, skateboarding culture, and you, he's starting to drink and he's starting to smoke and he's starting to you know get with girls and the again the coming of age story. And as I think this is arguably one of the best, if not the best, examples of it from this year. There, there's issues with mid '90s. And I think, like, I very much think Jonah Hill was just like, I'm going to take every cool thing that I have ever seen in a movie and try to put it in this movie. But I was like, man, I love that movie so much. And Sonny Saljic's performance as that kid who basically just goes from, like, hey, I kind of look up to my older brother to then getting exposed to this whole giant world that he really probably shouldn't have been exposed to at the age that he was and, and sort of trying to figure out a way to deal with it and... His, his interaction with his family dynamic and how his family dynamic changes. And luckily, he had a guy like Lucas Hedges to play off of as his older brother. And Lucas Hedges is incredible. Yeah. And he's really good in this movie specifically, but he's just incredible across the board. Uh, he very much would have made this list if uh, I would have seen a specific movie. He, he was great. He was a great character to play off of. All the characters and the performances in that little group were all really so well done and there were great interactions, great to play off of. But Sonny Saljic absolutely is the one from that movie that stands out and he gets my number one of the year. Yeah, I can understand putting kids um, at the top too because when they hit the when they hit the notes, it's more impressive. Because yeah, kids, absolutely. Right? And last year I leaned pretty heavily, at least in the females, for on a on a one specific kid in Logan. <laughs> yes, well, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really impressive when kids do that. Um, I never considered him. However, it was really good. Now that you mention it, uh, it was actually a pretty fantastic performance. Mm. Um, and the chemistry he had with his friends and really his brother, but like his friends more so, was pretty fantastic. Mm. And well beyond his years. Yeah, yeah, so, I think so. Yeah, that's a good pick. I'm 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 a fan. So, if you like kids or Nicolas Cage, this video was for you. Oh, man, that's a weird sentence. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, folks. Our top three best actors of 2018. Very much some surprises on that list. Who were the people that you thought we excluded that definitely should have been in there? Let us know in the comment section below. We go pure YouTuber on that one. And make sure you come back for the next video. That will be our top three best actresses of 2018. See you then.